All right, guys. This is my last try. Third time might be the charm or it might just be a disaster. But uh, anyway, the audio has been bad. I don't know why the audio is bad and the video is not bad, but um, it is. But right now I'm just trying to, let me see, I'm going to go back, double check my audio inputs and trust me, I know. Okay. Thank you. It's a little bit better. Okay. But I'm using the Mac microphone. I'm trying to, here, let me try this now. Um, how's that? Better, better, better. Okay. Better. Is it going through my headphones? Is it going through the caster? Okay. Amazing. All right. So we have to reboot the internet. We have to re okay. That's better. Okay. I don't need my headphones. What, headphones on, headphones on. Okay. Good. Thank God. Thank God. I capitalize God, but that's up to me. Um, all right, so we're 54. That's great. We're we're rolling. We're back in. Um, I'm very very sorry about that. Um, it was just it, it, the internet connection has sucked. Um, we've got this uh, incredible internet connection here, um, super super fast. But since the COVID 19, everybody's home and everybody's watching Netflix, which kills me. Uh, me kills my my internet speed. So. Anyway, um, again, I'm sorry. I'm glad it's better. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there. Thank you for, you know, for um, sort of coming to a free chat. What, what sort of thing? Um, so anyway, today we're going to talk about working dogs. And somebody said, is it just going to be Malinois and, and, and you know, and, and protection type sport dogs? Well, no, it can be anything. It can be any, the temperament, the overall personality of, um, of, of working dogs is what I want to discuss today. So, um, Thank you there, Travis, new member, great. Thank you to all of you guys who are members. Um, I, I really appreciate your memberships to, to robertcabral.com. That's my quick plug there. That um, That's how I keep these free chats going. I have a membership site um, and I have a, an Amazon store. That's, that's how I support this amazing endeavor I do here, which I love, love, love doing. Um, so I'm super happy to have you here. I um, I, I appreciate you guys for being members, for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Make sure if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the bell. I think you got to exit out and hit the bell and then come back, but but do it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. There is um, a great video going up this week. And again, you know, I do a short version of the videos that goes up on the free YouTube channel. That's so everybody in the universe can see it. Well, not the universe, in the, in, the, on the, in the world, on this planet, can see it for free. And... Um, then I put a longer, more intensive version of it on my membership section where you would join for $9.95 a month, hopefully, and then you would see the entire lesson. So again, I always try to keep something free. I really want you guys to know that um, there's always something for free. Always, always, always. Because I think dog training should be free. Great dog. Wow. That's amazing. $10 super chat just because I fixed the sound. Um, and Dobermans. I will not forget Dobermans. Um, uh, you know, Dobermans are a great breed. There, there is, um, they've had a lot of genetic problems, I think, in, in the recent years. But again, so, so have German Shepherd, Malinois are going to start going downhill because people are overbreeding the dogs, which I have a huge, huge, huge issue with. So I'm a very a big fan of good breeding. I think good breeding is super important. I think um, it's paramount. And I just had a great podcast, which I'm surprised not that many people have found yet, with my friend Jeremy Crisco from Whistling Wings Kennels who is a gun dog trainer, hunting dog, sport dog trainer, whatever you want to call it. But um, great podcast. It's a long podcast, one of the longest podcasts that I've done. And um, I think it's, you know, it, it's it's a great, great, great podcast. You know, had a really great time interviewing. We talked a lot about stuff. We see eye to eye, just like Oscar we had on from uh, talking about IPO. The whole point is, um, got another $10 super chat. My God, Th thank you so much for the super chats. That's, that's, that's great. Thank you. It's very kind of you. By the way, for that 10 bucks, you can join my member section if you're not already a member and um, get a month's worth of lessons. So I appreciate the super chat here, you know, irreverently, um, irrelevantly, I don't know if I say the words properly, but I, um, I, don't, uh, I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it. You know, you guys doing that, it's, it's not much to pay for great information, but again, I'm making it available for free. So when you give a tip, it's very cool. So um, anyway, we talked about that with with Jeremy Crisco. Um, if you get a chance to listen to watch watch that podcast, you can watch and listen to. There's little issues with the sound too. He was on his cell phone. You know, part of technology is you're going to have these problems. So you know, here and there, it happens. Um, we're going to talk about Dutch Shepherds. You know, the one thing I want to make a point of. Somebody just um, made a, a really important point. They they. Whenever somebody cancels their membership on my site, I ask a question. I ask one simple question, what could I do better? Because I really, really, really want um, 
to do a great service. I want I want that the ten dollars you pay me a month, or even you know when you give me a super chat. I want to perform a service for you. I want to give back to you, and I want to start by giving in the first place. And this person said that they quit their membership because they thought um, the the, the um, they thought that the um, membership section didn't relate enough to small dogs. Now I take that personally because Janet has a small. You know we have a small dog, Bosman, and we um, we don't. Um, take things lightly. Like I want to make sure everybody gets their money's worth and everything. So, uh, but, but the question was uh, another super chat. Thank you. Very, very nice. Um, okay. Since May, 2019 for training, that's fantastic. Eileen, uh, very, very cool. Um, you know, it's training a small dog, training a big dog, dogs are dogs, right? We've got to get past this thing of, well, I have a Malmo, I have a Dutch shepherd, I have this, I have that. The drives might be different, but there's not that much different in the dog themselves. And that's really, really important. Maybe you got to bend down more, but a sit is a sit, a down is a down, a come is a come. A correction is a correction. We're not going to correct, you know, softer dogs or smaller dogs or older dogs like we would connect, correct a, um, a bigger, stronger, more stubborn, muscular, bigger dog. So that's super, super important. Um, yeah, you know what I'm going to do, Jen, offer a one-time 35-minute phone chat. I do those. For, for members of my site, there's a 30-minute phone chat you can uh, sign up for. You have to pay for it. But um, Shamsa, they won't let you donate from Dubai. That's 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 terrible. But thank you so much for tuning in all the way from Dubai. We appreciate you guys um, everywhere in the world. You know, I mean, the Middle East, we've got a lot of followers in the Middle East. And, and I think that's fantastic. I love you guys over there. Um, and I really love hearing from people of so many different um, cultures. I, I dig it. Like, you know, I mean, I said something in a video the other day and Janet cringed and I said, you know, sometimes dogs don't get exposed to black people. And, you know, people don't want to say that because they seem like it's politically incorrect, but it's not. You know, I had a friend of mine who's from India and he bred German shepherds and he's a great breeder, great trainer. Great. Brett, thank you for the super chat. Um, they, uh, it, it, he's a great breeder, but he's Indian. So dogs wouldn't be used to seeing somebody who's of Indian descent. Culturally, we're, you know, we're one big planet. I get it. I'm an American. You're from wherever. That's all cool. I get that. But dogs see things very, very, very differently. And I think that's really important that dogs are exposed to things, especially what we're talking about today, working dogs. Working dogs need to be exposed to as many different people, environments, stimulations, foods, everything as possible, right? Um, Smith Canine Training, uh, an annual membership. You can just sign up and you can cancel after a year. Um, if you want to do an annual membership, email me. I'll set it up for you uh, through PayPal. I'll do it. It's a pain in the neck to do. Happy to do it. Happy, happy, happy to do it. Again, I want to make you guys happy. Another super chat. Um, in the stock dog, stock dog world. What's a stock dog? Tell me what a stock dog is there, GFBC, so I know. Um, Morocco. And we got a lot of people in the Middle East. What time is it over there um, in Morocco and um, Zanzibar, wherever you are? Um, um, da, 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 da. Well, I'm offering a thing for members, by the way. Um, Janet and I were talking about it. We want to get members to submit videos of them, like a one minute video testimony of them training, showing the training of their dog. And for that training, if you, uh, if you know, I'm going to pick one winner every month and you're going to get a free either a t-shirt or a 30 minute consult with me. Obviously the consult's worth a lot more, um, but any of that, 137 in Ireland. Okay, so I'm, you know, I have, it's almost impossible for me to be awake at, at 137 a.m. Um, ask Janet, I'm in bed by 7.30. I'm the biggest lightweight. And right now, Janet made this really, really delicious uh, turkey bolognese that's sitting upstairs. So for me to be sitting here talking to you while Janet's bolognese is up there is an amazing thing. So. Um, send me a message. I'll tell you where to submit the videos. Um, if you're a member, you do it through the, um, through the, through the member section and I'll send you an email. You just kind of do, you know, send me an email and then you can email back. I can't just get that. Um, all right. Anyway, so, um, Dane of the beast, love your videos. My dog is trained. Awesome. You know, all of you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, um, uh, letting me be a part of your training, right? I mean, I love, love, love training dogs. I'm working with this guy who helps me with the site a little bit now. And um, I'm trying to get somebody to take over some of the technical stuff because believe me, I do everything, right? I do everything from 
answering emails to making sure your membership section is set to uploading the YouTube videos to doing my, my own thumbnails. My thumbnails suck. I told, was told today my thumbnails suck. So I'm trying to get something in here. What I want to do now is open it up to questions. I've been rambling on for 10 minutes. Janet always says, I can't believe you just ramble so, so, so much. Um, okay, Treslin, all the way from South Africa. I love, uh, you know, I'm such a huge fan of Africa. I love Africa. I've been to Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda. I love, love, love Africa. And I'd like to go to South Africa one day. Um, Janet, I want to take her to Africa to show her what I, what I, um, what I loved about the, the whole continent. I mean, it was such an amazing, amazing, amazing place. Um, all right. So anyway, give me, uh, let's start with questions. And again, it's going to be a lot of questions. I'm going to kind of look for ones that Janet has kind of screened first so that I can know. Um, I want to, I want to answer as many questions as I can. This might be a long chat. Um, I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to cut anybody short, but, um, give me the questions and then uh, I'll hear Kyle. First one, Robert, I have a six month old Rottweiler. He's still terrified of traffic does great in all obedience, but trying to overcome the obstacle. Thanks and God bless for your dogs. Thank you, God bless you too, my friend. Um, well, it, a dog that's afraid of traffic is usually, it's a prey issue, so it's a confusion issue and you need to get them um, exposed to it. And what I did, Goofy had issues with traffic early on in his life because he was r raised, and I should say raised, he was uh, weaned on a farm, so he didn't really get that much exposure. But I, um, I just used to take him down to PCH, where you know where I lived on PCH, and I would literally um, feed him his meals there. So he'd go down there. If he was all concerned about anything, then um, he wouldn't eat, and then I would bring him back down three hours later. But he wouldn't get to eat in between, and that's kind of how I worked him through it. And he's pretty bulletproof now. So, um, and what I'm going to do is when I'm talking, I can't um, read because it's very distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a question, answer it, and then I'm going to look over and whatever the first thing I see is what I'm gonna answer, right? So um, let's see, yeah, there was one here that I wanted to get and I missed it. Um, somebody asked about rawhide. So I'm gonna answer that really quick. I don't like rawhides. I don't like rawhides at all. There is um, a, a company called Earth Animal that does a thing called no hides. Those are not no hides, like Noah's, like, like Noah's a biblical guy, but no hides. Rawhides, I don't suggest doing them at all. Be very careful with cheap treats for your dog. A lot of this stuff's imported from China. It's crap, it's just junk. Don't, don't use it. Raw bones are great. Raw bones are super good, like Janet's telling you there. Don't, don't do raw hides. Raw hides are bad. Um, how to stop lunging dog on leash. Um, I want to kind of stay with working dogs here. That's another thing. Um, uh, let, let, Janet, if there's any, okay, so here, uh, training a six-month-old. Kevin says, training a six-month-old German Shepherd last week. The dog didn't want me to walk him. He was timid and scared. Well, that's a dog that's not been properly socialized with other people. And a lot of times what you'll have to do is, um, you know, first of all, it's, it's really important for trainers. Those of you who are trainers out here, you know, I made my living training dogs for so long and working with clients, which I don't do as much anymore. But um, you, you have to be really cognizant of one thing. It's not important for the dog to do stuff for you. It's important that you train that dog to do stuff for their clients. So, Trainers are always taking the dog and yanking it and doing this and doing that. And the dog is suddenly suddenly he's doing all these things. That doesn't help, right? So you need to make sure that if the dog doesn't want to walk with you, then the dog should walk with the owner and you should get the, the, the relationship built up between you and the owner. That's really, really important. Um, so again, I'm only working on <clears throat> answering questions about working dogs, working dogs, working dogs. Um, have I used um, e-collar technologies, wing contacts for long hair dogs? I don't know what that is. I always use long contacts, longer contacts um, for all my dogs, even for shorter hair dogs. I like longer contacts because they, if they have any kind of an undercoat, it needs to get through those things. And you can always have the collar be less tight if you have, um, um, if you have a longer contact. My most difficult client, how I dealt with it, let's do a whole podcast on that. I've had many difficult clients. And uh, yeah, again, we're talking, you know, just I just want to talk about working dogs. So Janet, there was one question you said here. Hey, Eric, good to see you, buddy. Great to see you. Thanks. I'm glad the sound is fixed. Um, Janet said there was a great question early on when I was just rambling on for 10 minutes. So uh, let's see. Dana the Beast, what does this say here? I've used all your videos and trained my dog. Um, on heel focus, he'll sit later. Da, 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 da. He doesn't move if a car is coming. I say, wait, he stops and say yes. I don't understand that question. Sorry. 
of six month old giant schnauzer. Um, he knows his basic obedience and will perform them in the city with traffic and everything. But some days like today, he just won't do it. Is there at least, <laughs> it's at least one day a week. I don't know why he's doing that. I have no idea why the dog would do that, um, except for that you're not, you, you, your training might get kind of boring to the dog. So you need to amp it up. And if a dog doesn't want to do something, it's really important that you understand this concept, whether it's a working dog or you know a pet dog, the dog must comply. And I hate to say that, but the dog needs to see you about as a as a leader. The dog needs to see you um, that what you say, like in other words, let's say I tell my dog, you know, leave it. And he doesn't leave it one day because he doesn't feel like it because you said, well, I got to be fair to my dog. You're not being, you're never, never being fair to your dog if you're allowing them not to obey you. That's critical. You are never ever being fair to your dog if you allow him to not obey you. Because there's a, a, a Taoist saying that the, in the Tao, the, the T-A-O Tao, uh, the Chinese book of knowledge and wisdom, to know the big things and the little things and the little things and the big things. That means you must have your dog's relationship in little things, like just little things like sit there and wait, don't do this, don't do that, so that he will understand the big things as well. And Jan, you said, asking about a Dutch Shepherd. I know whoever asked about the Dutch Shepherd, is it here? Is it Emily? My six-month-old Dutch Shepherd is very sensitive to correction, can get nippy when we practice obedience. What is the best way to correct the nipping without shutting her uh, down, desire to keep working? Well, you know, that's not usually the case with Dutchies. Um, it's more often the case with what I've seen with Malinois. But you need to, um, you need to make corrections understood by a dog. And I think this is one of the big pieces that people don't do. They just are correcting the dog and the dog is kind of like in a confused state. So then suddenly we're doing, um, we're, we're confusing the dog more by on top of confusion, we're correcting the dog now. So we're punishing the dog because it's only a correction if the dog knows right from wrong. That's important. Like watch my leash pressure video on prong collars and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's a super good example to see. Douglas, biggest super chat we've ever had, $24.99. Thank you so much. It's kind. I'm answering all questions, but I'm going to hit yours really quick. What common toy drives what common toy drives mouths crazy? I tried many. No luck at all. Thank you from Lavelle. Is that Massachusetts? Um, MA, I think it's Massachusetts. Um, I'm a New England guy too. It's born in Rhode Island. Uh, you've helped me so much. I have a girl mouth one year, five months. I'm going to tell you the secret, the, the number one toy for every mouth that I've ever, ever, ever seen is a tennis ball. Simple as that. Tennis balls are, are notorious. In fact, they're so bad that I usually don't use them as toys with Malinois. Have you tried a, 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 a tennis ball? Um, I don't know where you went now. Douglas, have you tried a tennis ball? Tell me that. Janet, if you see the answer, let me let me know that. I want to make sure. And also, if you want to just um, shoot me an email, Douglas, on that question. Um, it, it's a, I don't know if you remember my site or not, but the, it's a Chuck gets, you know, they're again with tennis balls. I, I don't like dogs chewing on tennis balls too much. It's not the number, number one thing that I like to use because um, it, it's too much of a drive for the dog. So be really careful with that. I'll tell you the other thing I would look for is a yellow toy. Make sure it's yellow. Dogs see yellow very, very differently than other colors. Um, let's see here. Where else? God, you guys are killing me with the super chats. That's amazing. This is the best super chat we've ever had. Um, um, th okay, first time dog owner, JK, there's no way I would have the bond. That's great. Thank you so much. Very nice of you guys. I appreciate that. I, and again, I'm honored to do this stuff, by the way. You know, it's not not um, not for granted. I love doing this stuff. Um, thank you, um, in, in, Insanity. I, I, Shane, I think your name is, right? I, if so you've seen you once before. Um, all right, what is this here? Um, so, Harold, Geraldo Bologna, I'm assuming you're from Italy. A uh, working dog trainer told me I'm outing my dog a lot during my work sessions. I'm training for brevet, which is a Mondial ring or a French ring thing. I know working sport is different, but he said it affects the dog's hold on the bite, and he's right. So if you bite the dog, if you the dog bites and outs and bites and out and bites and outs, you're gonna end up with a dog with a real uh, chewy bite. Now it's not as big a deal in the ring sports. Um, but it's a huge deal in IPO or IGP, whatever they call it now. So what you want the dog to do is to get a hold of the object or the tug or the sleeve or the, 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 the whatever it is. And you want them to have a nice calm grip on it. You want to work the dog, work the dog, work the dog, then let the dog carry the object around, carry it, 
build some possessiveness. You want a very calm grip. Same thing like with Dwayne Amater. Janet's working really, really hard on that to get his grip to be super calm, super solid. <clears throat> That's what makes the grip. And it takes, <clears throat> excuse me, it takes, it can take years to develop a solid grip on a dog. So don't screw it up yet. Yeah. Bite out, bite out, bite out. That's something you do later because it's important the dog understand the out. But that trainer is absolutely correct. So don't, don't do that. Um, okay, Czar, I don't understand your question. Thanks a lot. He will do it after a correction, but it's like a child being forced to do it and make sure he, I don't understand the question part of that again. Um, but if, if you're forcing a dog to do something, make it fun, right? So if you're, if you're making the dog comply, make them do it even through a harsh correction. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what that correction is, but, um, it, you, you want to make sure that after the dog complies, no matter how hard I correct a dog, and I've corrected dogs hard, right? Um, it, it, the dog needs to see that it's fun. So you can switch on a personality. Like you can be, hey, da, 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 hey, good boy, good boy, good boy. It's flipping like that is a huge, huge, huge thing. Okay, Darwin Robinson's teaching, you're teaching the dog blinds, right, from IPO, how to run around the blind and using a cone. You can teach the foundation of it with a cone, but you really need to get a blind. You can get the mini blinds, but um, you can do it with a chair. You can do it with anything, but be really, really careful of um, uh, of doing it with just a cone because the dog is going to go around cones. Um, the basic foundation, people teach it around trees. You can teach it around anything. You're better off teaching it around a tree because it's taller. That's what I would do. Um, let me see. Does Belgian Malinois can protect your house from intruders without protection training? Well, any dog can do that. If a dog feels pressure, they're going to defend, they're going to um, protect, they're going to do that. That's a natural instinct of a dog is to be protective, just like any, any, any other person. Um, um, I, I don't know what a lot of these questions. Any tips for how to have working dog in household with a pet dog and children? Well, you know, you got to, it's, it's not the best thing to do, right? I mean, it, it can be done, but usually people who have working dogs will end up um, usually having one dog or they'll kennel the dogs because you, the, if when the working dog starts playing too much with other dogs, you lose the dog's desire to want to work for you. Now, if you're a great trainer and you do this all the time, it's not an issue. I've got no issue with it. Um, Jeremy, my friend, has no issue with it. Uh, Oscar, you know, a lot of these people, really great trainers, have no issues with it. But if you're just getting started and you're playing too much with the dog and the dog is having too much freedom, it doesn't work well. It, that doesn't sit well with me because I think dogs should be pets, should be in the house. But it's super, super, super important that you um, you don't diminish the drive or or or, or um uh, thin out that drive, dilute the drive, is what I'm trying to say, by letting the dog play too much. You know, like if a dog's playing with stuffed toys and then suddenly you want the dog to retrieve and hold a duck, he's not going to do it. He's too used to playing. So you have to channel the drive of the dog. And that was another question somebody had. How do you channel the herding drive of a dog for other things? You just do that, right? The, the herding drive is the dog's desire to chase something and, and move it, to move um, things, animals or whatever. You um, want to make sure that that when you do that, that the dog is limited to the exposure of those things to a place where the dog can succeed. That's critical, right? Um, okay, you got a 10-week-old German Shepherd nips like crazy at my wife, um, ankle more than mine. What's the best solution? He's going to do it, put the dog in a crate. Sorry, that's, that's just what you're going to do. Uh, Janet is going to prepare herself because at some point we're going to get a, a another puppy, another mal puppy. Um, it's it's it is. I mean, Dwayne nipped and Janet was like, "Wow, this is a lot of nipping," but it's really nothing compared to what it's going to be with a Malinois. So, um, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, puppies, Janet's right. Um, let's see here. I'm glad your my video is amazing. Thank you, Cry. That's very nice from Norway. You guys, up, you guys are up really late. I know it's nine hours difference to, to Switzerland and Germany. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, so how could a female and male working dog live together without mating like yours, for an example? Well, first of all, I spayed Maya a year or two, after, a year or so after I got her. Um, I was going to keep her and breed her, but I didn't. Um, it, but I'll tell you one thing. It was a complete... It was so much work. It was so much, so much work to have an intact male and female. And that doesn't matter if it's a working dog or not. And you don't want to be one of these morons who has these oopsie pregnancies. Oh, oh boy, my dog's got pregnant. Well, you're an idiot, right? That's stupid. 
So um, I kenneled Maya when she was in heat and, and that lasts for, you know, two to three weeks. And there's a, a pre-period, a post-period and she's bitchy and it's a, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, I don't have classes. I don't have any public classes. Janet and I were planning on um, doing some workshops and stuff, but nothing right now. Charlie Baker, thank you for the super chat. One and a half year old Malinois, currently at working dog training camp, three weeks board and train. What are some common mistakes people make once having the dog back at home after such structured training environment? And I'm gonna tell you what that is. It's a great, great, great question. They don't enforce the obedience. They become very lax with it, right? The dog, if you have a Malinois, a Dutch Shepherd, a Belgian, a Roddy, a Doberman, whatever you have, their natural instinct, once they get it in them, if it's a working line dog, is to bite. So it's super easy to channel that, they get that, the dog understands it. What's hard is for the dog to understand when not to bite, when not to, um, to, to, to do these things. So once the dog is trained in protection, I've sold protection dogs in the past and trained them, the number one thing we never have to teach them to do again is bite, right? They'll naturally do that. So what you naturally have to teach them is to reinforce the obedience of when to bite and when not to bite. That's critical. Um, seven month old German Shepherd reacts badly, pulls and loud barks to some uh, dogs on the street. The dog has no obedience, right? The dog is either trying to play or trying to be assertive or aggressive. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's gonna end bad unless you can get the dog to focus on you. Take the dog, walk other directions, walk back and forth, um, make 180 degree turns. Be sure that if you have a dog that has some kind of a, a, a drive issue, which is what we're talking about today, working dogs with working dog drives, that you need to channel those drives. It's not about you um, squashing those drives. I think the mistake people make a lot of times, the dog is acting out and then they tell the dog, down, 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 down. And the dog is so jacked up that they'll start squealing in that, right? I tell my dogs plots because they know that that's a turn off switch for them, but you need to channel that first. And sometimes you need to turn the dog 180 degrees and come back and then turn them 180 degrees and then come back. That's super, super important. Amber asks, whoops, it is, any advice on getting my Aussie to stop forging forward on the leash? He's on a prong call and I've tried all the maneuvers. He follows really well. He's just slightly ahead. Well, there are leaders and there are laggers. If you can do competitive obedience. You need to fix that really, really, really quickly. But um, what I would do is watch my leash pressure video. You're not doing the leash pressure properly on the prong or else you wouldn't be forging forward. Every time a dog gets you know, more than the, their shoulders or their hips in front of me, I'm doing a 180 degree turn to fix that. Um, Muscle Dog Mafia, that's a great name. Your opinion on the lack, and thank you for the super chat, by the way. Uh, your opinion on the lack of dog sports coverage and what if any sports uh, would you like to see promoted more? I, I mean, I think Schutzen is great. I think, you know, there are certain things in the sport that I have an issue with, right? So like, I don't like long bites because unless you have somebody great, like, like my friend Oscar catching or Danny Craig catching the dogs, but to have just anybody catching the dogs is super, super dangerous for a long bite. A lot of dogs get jammed with it. It's very, very dangerous. You get a great decoy, great thing to do. Um, I don't like tracking in the States. There's way too many chemicals and the dirt and the grass. So you got a lot of, a lot of issues there. You got a risk of a dog getting poisoned just by, by going tracking. I love the obedience. I love the protection work of that. I love Mondio sport, ring sport. Goofy did his level three obedience in Mondio ring sport. It's a fantastic, fantastic sport. Um, it should, you know, you gotta get young people involved. Schutzen is, IPO is not gonna get many young people. It's kind of a boring sport. It's kind of an old man sport. I love it. But, um, I, you know, you just, I would love to see him get promoted a lot more. I, I love dog. I, I mean, I, Janet loves agility. Um, I love hunting training. It's, it's, it's impractical for a lot of people. It takes so much time. So Zach, thanks for the super chat. I'm, I'm not just answering super chats here, by the way. Um, I've got a 10 week old Husky puppy. He's very mouthy. How do we teach her what she can bite, what she can't bite any strategy for that? Um, okay. So I'm not doing, I'm going to answer it for you because you did a super chat. And I can't, I feel bad if I don't, but, um, the easiest way for a 10 week old puppy is to limit your engagement with them, right? Only 10 minutes at a time, put the dog in a crate, give the dog a lot of stuff to chew on. If they start chewing in your hands, you can say, out. Oh, you can kind of redirect them to something, but put them away during that time so that they see you're not getting a response. The more you yell at them and do anything like that, the more you're going to have an issue with them, right? If a dog is being yelled at, then they're getting a response out of you. And that's not what you want. 
You want the dog to understand there's no response. And by the way, the, the puppy more than likely is doing because he hasn't been taught bite inhibition, doesn't know that it's wrong to do it. And he's doing it because he's teething, right? He's going through, he's experiencing like babies clawing at your face, puppies are gonna bite at you. That's just what they do. It's, you got a year of it. So if, if I can tell you right now, you got a year of it and you feel better, then you'll feel better about it. Um, let's see here. Um, um, what's this question here, unapologetically me? How would you inhibit the desire to greet while in a medical setting? The healthcare workers love my working dog and you notice them noticing him. Um, I would tell them, don't look at my dog. You're, you're gonna have to stand up and tell them what they can and can't do that you're not gonna accept. You just say, listen, I'm training my dog. Don't don't interact with my dog. That's it. Is that what you're asking me though? I mean, um, the healthcare, so I don't know if you want the dog, if you're trying to get the, inhibit the dog or the person. So maybe you can make that a little bit clearer. So be real clear on your pictures here, uh, pictures on your um, on your questions here. Raw diet, I like raw diets. Um, Celine or it's uh, Tresline, whatever your name is. Uh, Tres Treslin, anyway. Um, I I like raw diets. People say they're dangerous. Oh, you can get salmonella, you can get E. coli, you can get this, you can get that. There's a lot of danger in it. Look, in anything. My friend talked about this. He said something really good. I said, do you think there's a danger in raw feeding? This guy's a scientist. He said, well, there's a danger in anything, right? And you have to limit your um, exposure. So you can say, well, I'm just going to feed my dog kibble. But there's there's recalls on kibble all the time. There's less recalls on a solid uh, or you know, a gore organic or really good quality meat and vegetable if you're doing that. But be really aware that just giving a dog meat and vegetables is not enough. It's not a balanced diet. You need to supplement it. You need to give the dog uh, calcium and supplements so that the dog um, has proper, proper nutrition. Eric, I want to answer your question. My three-year-old in old English bulldog will go to my wife and lay in her lap. As soon as she starts to pet her or rub her, she growls. Sometimes she snaps for no reason. Uh, so she firmly sends the dog to her place. What do I do? Well, you know, I think you got to work through that. Maybe do some hand feeding with the dog. Maybe have your wife be involved in obedience, right? And if she is just the bringer of love and all that stuff, it's not really what I would um, recommend. Like Janet is very involved in training my dogs, even though, you know, we've only been back together like three years now. We dated a long time ago, a whole other story for a different podcast. But um She's very involved. Like she tells my dogs, hey, sit down, this and that. She has a really, really solid relationship with them. And she takes that very seriously. She's um, she, she will give my dogs obedience commands. And if they don't listen to her, I jump in and I say, no, no, no you got to listen to her. Right. I, I command that. Like I, I can control her dogs. She needs to be able to control my dogs. Really, really important. Um, let's see. Okay, what's this Pragna? 10 week old blue healer. I haven't answered any question about blue healer, so I'm gonna answer that one. Um, I just went away. Oh, there it is. Um, luring and shaping, sit down, stand, not able to stay, using yes as a release word. We are using a platform. He lunges head when we don't give a treat. Well, so the problem is you need to reinforce that. So I would have the dog on a line, on a, on a long line, and I would put the dog on the command and I would give a tug on it, tug on it, tug on it, and I'd walk away, tug, tug, stay, tug, tug, stay, and make sure the dog sees that. Um, I, I've got that in several of my videos, and you might want to watch like the perfect sit video. I think I talk about it in that, um, that and that will help you with the stay. Watch watch my videos. If there's not a good stay video, send me a message, and I'll do one. If I don't have one good video, and I redo um, things all the time. There's only so many things you can teach a dog, but there's multiple um, different angles and different ways to teach them. By the way, if I haven't answered your question, go outside and get where if I've, I've answered your question, give this video a thumbs up so that it'll get some good visibility on YouTube. I got to delete all the other ones with a crappy audio. So, um, okay, you guys are answering, asking Janet questions. If you do, that's awesome. Um, okay, Lewis, thank you for the super chat. At the end of the thing is those pop up. And they seem really bright. So that's, I, I answer those first, um, but I'm answering all your questions, by the way. Have it any work with Australian cattle dogs? How do you find it? My seven months Australian cattle dog has been great so far with training, but has started to become more defined. Okay, so that's totally common for Australian cattle dogs. I had um, some cattle dogs I've worked. One in particular was at a shelter in Prescott, Arizona, who um, was super defiant, right? So he would get that. He would, um, he would get like his little obedience. And he had his ball, and then that was it and he would become defiant. So you need to correct the dog. Remember, an Australian, a, a cattle dog, just a cattle dog in general, is made to be so strong that it goes up against a thousand pound 
cow. That's insane, right? A cattle dog is 50 pounds going up against a thousand pound cow. They are defiant. They're strong headed. You've got to be very patient. Jan and I were just talking about that in the car today that, you know, the one thing people mostly fail with their dogs on is patience. They just give up. And if you do that, you're going to, you, you've just got to out stubborn the dog. Maya is one of the most defiant and not very bright dogs in the world, but I just keep going. I just keep going, going. And it tests my patience all the time, all the time. So, um, let's see what you got here. A muscle dog. Moth. Thank you again. I mean, it's crazy. You guys are doing these much super time, super kind of you. And I appreciate it you know, in light of all this stuff we're going through with the economy. Thank you. Uh, American bulldog and me have been hose crazy with all the weight pull machines. Um, have been, yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 a lot of that stuff's canceled. So, you know, um, you can do pulling, you know, uh, sledding stuff with your dogs. It's super great. Just get the, get the right harness for the dog to, um, to, to, um, do that don't do, do it on a regular harness. Okay. What's this 10 month old Dutch shepherd keeps eating everything around her. How do I get her to stop? Don't put food down. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about there, but you've got to control your dog's environment, right? The way to control the dog is to control their environment. And if they're doing stuff like eating leaves and doing this and doing that, then you're not controlling their environment. Dwayne in the beginning, you know, had issues where he would pick up a remote control. So you can either correct the dog or you can put the remote controls away and don't make a big deal like don't get don't encourage the behavior right don't yell you can yell at the dog and correct them but you can't encourage it and think it's going to go away it's never going to go away so you need to control the environment now Dwayne, we can leave them out goofy all our dogs we leave our dogs out with everything shoes janice beautiful shoes um sneakers my ugly sneakers and uh the dogs don't have any issues with that so um Nine month old Doberman too jumpy. Any advice? Well, if you crush the dog's drive to jump, he's not going to be a working dog. So if you're going to do any working dog sports with him, you need to control the environment again for the dog. That's super, super, super important. Um, any heel suggestions for a one year old German Shepherd? I would um, I would lure the heel, lure the heel with treats. Make sure the dog is at your hip. Jan and I are about to do another focus healing video, which I really want to talk about a lot of these finer points. But, um, you know, Goofy's got a really nice focused heel. It's definitely not perfect. It's nice. I mean, he looks really, really great doing it. But um, I, I didn't, I wasn't as um, picky on it back then as I would be now. So he tends to forge a tiny bit forward. Not a big deal, but um, you definitely, definitely want to do that. Um, Froyland, that's a great question. I get it all the time. Is it possible to teach protection by yourself? And the answer to that for 99.9% .9 of people is no. Okay, somebody here asked a question um, that I, it seems like one I should answer here. Okay, so this is going to get me in trouble, but I'm going to answer it. I'm a small woman, 100 pounds, planning on getting a pup for IGP. I work at a place that breeds and trains working line German Shepherds, but think a small 50-pound female male might be a better fit. Thoughts? I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a sexist statement. Um, if you're smaller and you're a woman, you don't have the strength that a larger man has. For a lot of things, a, most things with dogs don't require that physical correction. Like you need to have that kind of a strength, but it's an advantage, right? It's clearly an advantage to have a physical presence over a dog. I would get a smaller dog. And if you want to do you know protection stuff and IGP with them, I love Malinois. If it's a well-bred dog, I would really, really, really consider that. Um, unapologetically, do I recommend one style of harness over another? It depends what you're using it for. Like I don't walk dogs on harnesses. I like the Ray Allen ghost harnesses. I think they're great. Um, there's some harnesses. Go to my Amazon store, check out the harnesses that I recommend there. That's an easy way. If you're looking for a product, go to robertcabral.com, go to the Amazon store, and there's all the products I recommend. You don't even have to ask me for that. Um, you want to, Caleb, you want to supplement your dog's diet with goat's milk. It's a great thing. I know a lot of people who do it. I think it's a really, really good thing to do. It's a lot of nutrition in, in goat's milk. Um, let's see here. How do I obtain a strong bond to my two-year-old German Shepherd to come and respond to recall off lead? Build a solid recall on lead first. Right, do a lot of training before you ever let that dog off lead because you will destroy the relationship when he doesn't come. You're going to teach him not to come. Okay, what's this? Corey, thank you for the super chat. Luring my 10 week old German Shepherd healing with a little yogurt left in container works very well and saves my fingers. That's actually quite brilliant. That's a really good idea. I've never thought of doing that. Um, but good one. 
good one. Sometimes you hear things. Janet, I never heard of that before. Janet probably did. I never heard of that. Um, great one. Um, let's see. I have a six month old working line German Shepherd. Um, we watched your your videos about prong collars. When is the best age to start introducing a prong collar? Thanks for the amazing content. You're quite welcome. And I would say right around six months, four to five, I'd say six months personally. That's what I would really do. Um, and again, please, please watch my prong collar videos. They're on YouTube. They're all, you know, they're free. Um, be sure you watch them because it's really important to set the dog up for success. Do not, you know, when, when Janet was starting to do some stuff with Dwayne, she wanted to put a prong collar on and I put a prong collar on and we worked through it. And the dog is brilliant on a prong collar, right? He, it really enhanced the relationship with Janet and the dog. So, um, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta follow that. Um, there's somebody who asked a question. How, does having a dog neutered have an adverse impact on drive? Yes, it takes all the testosterone out of the dog. You know, it's we we have three sexes. I was talking about it on the phone with Mike Ritland when we did our podcast. We have male dogs, female dogs, and neuter dogs. Um, neuter dogs don't have the sex hormone of the male or the female, and that's what kind of makes. Think about if you're neutering uh, children at eight weeks old, or it's you know at eight years old, or anything like that. Um, it's a it's an important solution because people are morons, and there's a lot of uh, dogs in shelters. But you're you're really you know, screwing everything up. You're screwing up the genetics of the dog when you neuter the dog. And I say that because I don't have to answer it to anybody, right? I don't answer it to anybody. I, I'm telling you the truth. People like it sometimes. People don't like it sometimes. But I don't care. If you don't like me, I'd rather be loved for who I am uh, than hated for who I'm not. I'd rather be hated for who I am than to be loved for who I'm not. That's a famous saying, and I, I just know it from a Van Zandt song. So, um, Okay, if you guys are checking out, um, I'll, I'll go a little bit longer. There's still a bunch of questions coming in. I'm so sorry. I'll do another one of these at this time, Janet. I think you know this is a really good time for people. Um, uh, so I, I, I really hope that I um, get to as many of your questions as I can. What's this here? Let's see. The Daily Vlogger. Six-month-old German Shepherd doesn't like toys, only chases me, so it's hard to tire him out. How do I get more active and build his drive to run, chase toys, and be more active? You might start. You might try using a flirt pole, um, which if you don't know what that is, you, you just Google it and you'll see, um, because you want to build it. You don't want your dog learning to chase you as a whole um, – exercise it's not it's not a balanced healthy exercise because what happens is the drive is coming up towards you and sometimes it's hard to shut down so be sure you um build a drive on another object a tug toy ball a lot of times what we do is put a dog on a harness and then tease the dog and tease the dog it's called agitating the dog you agitate the dog towards a tug or anything like that um but if the dog doesn't have that drive you need to figure out something else maybe look at something like a lotus ball or something like that um Let's see here. A lot of questions. So uh, I, I want to kind of keep going. I'll go a little bit longer. Um, let's see here. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of questions. Um, how to teach a deaf dog recall the sign language. Yeah, it's the only, only way you're going to do it. You're going to have to teach the dog. You lure the behaviors and then you, you, you work the dog through that. Um, let's see. Yeah. You know, I, I know these videos, by the way, this whole live idea is Janet's brilliance, right? The sheer brilliance of Janet to, um, to do this because she said, look, we need to give something back to you guys. We really want to be good to you guys and help you guys. So this was, um, Janet's idea. So thank you for that idea. And, and you know, it's, it's a really good idea. Adam, one year old working line Roddy is great with all the kids around us, but hard to keep him focused. He's off leash. We live in the country on a dead end street. Don't let them off leash, right? The more, if you're letting a working line dog off leash, one, you got a risk of the dog getting hit by a car. And a friend of mine who trains protection dogs, his son let the dog off leash, hit another dog off leash, and the dog got killed. Oh, it didn't get killed, it broke his pelvis. But um, don't let the dog off leash, right? You've got a young dog, you need to build focus on the dog so that the dog will want to be with you. You've got to build the obedience before the leash comes off, because if your leash is off, you got no way to reinforce what you really, really want. Let's see, where are we? Um, okay, so here, Samuel uh, Yang Zhao. I'm in one of your videos, I think you say to only use the prong collar for training, 10 to 20 minutes maximum. Can you still take your dog on longer walks if they still pull? Would that destroy the training? No, because walking and training are two totally different things. You can use walking to train, but it's not really um, 
that it can be a whole different exercise. Just remember when you let your dog walk, just let them walk. Don't make it a whole obedience thing. That's a huge thing. Hey, Pete's in the room. Finally, I get to see Pete. I never, Pete's, call, you know, always text Pete is my buddy and a very great guy who um, works with me, works for, for me and with me um, at Bound Angels. When we do the Bound Angels University, when you see the guy, the, the real strong looking, handsome guy, that's Pete. Pete is a great guy. Thank you, Pete, for just ch chiming in. I just I love you, and you're a great guy, and I, I miss seeing you. I don't even get to see Pete. All right, Karen North says, 15-week-old German Shepherd nips my son and me when petting. Hubby swat his nose two times. He doesn't nip anymore. I tried, and he still does it. I'm the one to train, treat, and play. He always wants to be with me, help. He's doing that. First of all, I wouldn't you know, swat a dog at 15 weeks old in the nose for doing that. You know, I, I would please don't i'm not a family counselor so i don't say that this is my opinion um young dogs always nip that's it they always nip that's just what they're gonna do so don't 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 take it personally just let them do it and get, tr trade them off breeding man if i could answer that question i would be the king of the universe because it's just gonna it's just gonna happen the, the thing you can do is you know here's one thing i think Breeders need to be more particular who they sell dogs to. They need to be more particular on the rights they give to dogs. Because if I if I buy a working dog and I can breed the dog, and that's what idiots do all the time, right? They'll go buy a dog for a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks, then they breed it with this other dog that somebody bought for a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks, and they sell the puppies for five hundred thousand bucks. Now you have these diluted, crappy lines. I'll tell you what I would do. If you're listening to this podcast, I would encourage you not to buy a dog from somebody who just happened to breed them. Find somebody who's a breeder, who done, who's done a lot of genetic testing on these dogs and just support those people. You know, it's 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 gonna happen. I mean, they're gonna get destroyed, but I will I will never buy a dog from somebody like that, even if it's cute or it's got a sad story, or it's got this or it's got that. Um, I won't do it because I, I know it's gonna, it's gonna destroy the breed. That's really, really, really bad. Um, hey, Goofy. Goofy's lifting his foot over there. I'm gonna throw something out of here. Um, I'll go a little bit longer. I mean, it's, if you guys can give me some more thumbs up, I don't know why we have 176 people only 79 thumbs up. That's not good at all. That's not good at all. But a lot of super chats. So maybe we, we draw the line there. Um, okay, did I answer this question? Yes, Karen, I hope that answered your question. I just want to make sure I got it before your super chat runs out. Um, um, okay, I know that's a joke, Eric, so I'm not going to answer it, but it's very, very funny. Okay, here's somebody from, from one of the Eastern Bloc countries. I don't even know how to say your name, but I'm gonna answer your question. Love your videos. I have a female German Shepherd who live on a farm and unfortunately she loves to chase chickens, cows and cats. She is one year old, two months old. She also barks at my husband, knows basic commands, advice, obedience training. You're gonna to need to keep the dog. I don't know if you can use e-collars and where you live, but um, you need to build structure into the dog because the dog is gonna kill a chicken. The dog is gonna kill um, a cat right? Because the prey drive left unchecked never goes away. That's it. So you need to build solid, solid, solid obedience. Um, what's this here? SWAT med, uh, small 18 month old Malinois, 50 pounds female, tried to adopt another and my mal showed aggressive behavior. Can she be content with being a single dog? Yes. A working dog is fine to be a single pet. They're made to be single pets. You don't need another dog to keep them company. If you want to train your dog, don't get a second dog to keep them company. It's a mistake, right? We space our dogs apart. I and mean, we got all our dogs are like eight, nine, 10 years old. And we got Dwayne, who's now two, who's going to be two on Janet's birthday, which is next month. Um, and uh, he is old. The other dogs are old enough where it's not that interference. We didn't get two uh, puppies the same age. It's stupid. Really, really, really stupid. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Irish water spaniel can't seem to nail the recall. And he is excited rabbit when he's excited. He's a rabbit. He doesn't miss a beat chasing the rabbit because you're not building a strong recall without the distractions, right? You need to build a recall. The recall needs to be absolute the, with a line. And if the dog does not come to you, shake his eyeballs out, right? Just correct the dog. If he must come. Two things a dog, three things a dog must do under any conditions. He must come when called, he must stay when told, and he must leave it when told. That's it. I don't care about anything else, but if you are having a hard time building a recall, 
Do not let this dog, put a flexi lead on the dog and let him go chase after a, a rabbit and correct the dog back to you. You're not doing your dogs any favors by not demanding absolute compliance. You must have compliance. And this is where corrections come in. And this is where positive only training falls to crap, right? It becomes the worst, most negative, most abusive thing trainers do to dogs. They do not ever, ever, um, every time we say, Jan, take a shot, you're going to get drunk. Um, they, they, they don't have an option. If you allow a positive trainer or a positive philosophy to say, oh, I'm not going to correct my dog. I'm just going to keep luring him and luring him and luring him, and I'm going to make it positive. You will not, you will never outweigh the, pos the, the, the instinctual predatory drives of a dog. You're not going to do it, right? So if you're trying to do that through positive only stuff, you're, 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 it's, it's, the, it's a complete disaster. You're abusing your dog. Please don't do it. Okay, um, any advice for advanced training for my Catahoula Leopard dog? Join my website. There's tons of stuff. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, um, let's see. Okay, so yeah, so, th so th please, please, please don't do positive only training with your dog. I hate positive only training. I think I'm the most positive trainer in the world. Everything I do is positive reinforcement. That means the dog does the right thing. The dog gets the right thing, right? He does the right thing, he gets a reward. Does the wrong thing, he gets corrected. That's it. End of story. If you're looking for good supplements, go over to my Amazon store. There's a link to every one of them there. Um, Andy B, my Malinois, 18 month old. As we walk, she doesn't pull, pull, but always move to the end of the leash. Um, so no prong collar. You know, you, you don't need a prong collar to fix that. You can fix that at the end of a long line. Put a regular martingale collar on the dog. Let the dog go. When the dog gets to the end of the leash, you make a 180 degree turn. It's in all my leash training videos. It's, uh, it's, it's everywhere. You don't need the prong collar for it, but you need to do a really solid, abrupt about turn. Um, by the way, we can get a couple more thumbs up. We, you know, we ended one super chat, uh, so one chat, one live chat with as many thumbs up as there were members in there. So that's what my goal is for this one. Um, Okay, Dane of the Beast, I was a member of your site, can't join now because of the time. I totally understand. Listen, I'm not trying to sell memberships here. I'm trying to keep dogs in homes. So there's a lot of stuff that you can um, learn from my YouTube videos. There's go outs. There's, um, I'm, doing, I'm doing right now, I just shot it with Goofy, uh, some scent training, like how to de detect scent on little dowels. I'll be putting that up in the, in, the, in the next few weeks. And I'll always, always, always have a free version on YouTube. So Zeta says, Zeta, it's a Japanese thing I'm going to answer because I my martial arts background. Do you think getting a German Shepherd rescue as a younger, first time dog owner is still a bad idea if they studied balanced dog training, your training philosophy and the guidance of a rescue? No. I think it's a great dog. You know, a young German Shepherd, you can do a lot of great stuff with. If you're rescuing the dog, you might have um, some really good um, information on the dog from the rescue. The rescue should work with you. Um, yeah, if you're following a good, solid, balanced training protocol, a young German Shepherd might be a wonderful, wonderful dog for you. Jen says, do you use the same reward used in training as you do for corrections? I don't understand that question. Do you use the same, oh, the same no reward used in training as you do for, yeah, of course, absolutely. Um, Gerardo, thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for becoming a member. That's fantastic. Thank you and welcome to the site. Um, Andy B says, thanks for all your videos have gotten her this far, but seems stuck. I'll keep going though. Yeah, just keep going, right? Don't stop. Don't think just because your dog is hitting a wall doesn't mean you should stop. That's horrible. That's terrible, terrible, terrible thing. The biggest failure you do to dogs is giving up on them. Um, can I make a video of what a day in the life of a new puppy should be? I'm going to do that. Jan, I've talked about that. It's it's a tough one. It's, you know, people always say, well, do a video on what, what it's like, you know, what your day is like. Most of my day is really boring. I'm sitting behind the computer talking to you guys and doing this stuff. It's not that exciting. I wish I had a more exciting life, but I don't. Kind of boring, really boring. I eat and then I like work and then I eat and then I, I sleep. I'm a boring guy. I'm terribly, terribly boring. I, I, I think you guys think I'm so exciting, but I am not. Um, Zeta, you, you know, if you're in your 20s, if you can dedicate the time to training the dog, I think a young German Shepherd, I don't think it would be a problem. You need to know structure training. That's really, really important. 
Um, recommended age for starting a border collie German Shepherd running, hiking with me? That's a great, great question. One year old. One year, you want the growth plates closed on the dog, right? German Shepherds at about a year, 12, 14, 16 months, the, the growth plates are closed. Don't do it. Do not run puppies too early. You'll destroy them. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, Charlie Baker. Okay, you're talking to somebody else. Um, let's see. Okay, listen, it's 55 minutes here. I'm going to wrap it up in about four minutes here, which would be 60 minutes. It'll be the longest super chat, or super, the longest chat we've ever done. So um, if there are, are any other questions, uh, hit me with them now. Hit a couple more thumbs up. By the way, if you have not hit the bell to subscribe to my channel, please do so. We're at 126,000 subscribers. It is really my goal to get to 200,000 or so this year. I would love to see 200,000. And uh, you know, the ultimate goal is going to be a million. So we're working on it. We're working hard to make this the best dog training channel um, uh, anywhere. Shannon, that very kind super chat. Um, so glad you remember my site. Thank you for having joined my site. Thank you for the super chat. You know, I think, you know, I've never gotten one negative comment on people who have let their, you know, cancel their memberships. Um, a lot of people say for four, five, six months, a year, and then eventually they'll cancel because they say, well, I've learned a lot. I'll come back in six months or whatever. And that's totally cool. But I've never had anybody um, really complain. There's never been a complaint. That, that's amazing to me, by the way. There's been a lot of members. Um, yes, you can use a uh, flirt pole with young dogs. Be careful with them. Maybe at some point I'll do a video on flirt poles because they, they can be a great tool, but they can also be a problem. Uh, when dogs are wrestling, playing with each other, when should we intervene to avoid escalation if one dog is not getting the cues? Um, it, you're going to have to go by a gut feeling on that one. And I do it, you know, when Dwayne Amater and uh, Goofy were playing when they were younger, I was in their faces. I was like, nope, that's enough. That's enough. That's, and I'm still, I'm total, I'm a total dog Nazi. I kind of get in there. Um, I don't ever let dogs work things out ever, ever, ever. Right. That's just not what I do. I'm always doing everything. I don't let dogs work it out ever. I learned that, um, but, you know, when I was doing the shelter, shelter training and I would put two dogs together, I would always get in the face of the dogs. And that makes all the dogs feel safe, right? So if I control it, the dog only has to look to one place. Um, okay, Jen, you're at, okay, it says my connection's unstable. That's because everybody in the neighborhood's watching Netflix now. It's crazy. Um, all right. Okay, you already answered that question. Tim, uh, don't let puppies run. Don't take them running. It's really, really bad. We can give a couple more thumbs up. We've got about two minutes left in the super chat. Um, Unless I get a super important question, I'll answer it. Otherwise, um, I'll be back next Wednesday, I promise. You know, maybe I should do this later in the day. This seems to be a much better time for you guys. So, Janet, let's plan on another one later in the day, too. Um, Michelle said we got our five-month-old Mal a month ago, right when stay-at-home order set. He barks and tries to chase people walking that he can't see through the fence. Oh, don't leave a young puppy out in the yard to play. That's a disaster, complete disaster. Your puppy needs to be in the house. The puppy needs to be in a crate. The puppy needs to come out structured, especially if you have a working dog and he's running around the yard doing that, you will destroy this dog. You will destroy the drive of the dog. You'll destroy, destroy the relationship of the dog. Please don't do it. You're, you're at home. You've got a standard stay at home order. Who knows how long it's going to last? Train your dog, right? Take them out, structured, structured training. Eric, take care. See you, buddy. Good to see you in here. Great chatting with you, buddy. Um, all right, Jan, another question for Janet. Okay, I'm a 20-year-old who works from home. I've been contacting trainers, watched all your videos, and talking to other Roddy owners. was wondering if I could get one. What do you think? Uh, trying to, you, you can. I mean, you know, I, I don't I mean, I mean, don't breed Rottweiler, so I can't tell you, but um, why not? Um, can you put a prong on a collie? Yes, you can put a prong on any dog. It's a very, very humane tool. Please watch my videos on how to do it humanely. Last question here. How much time? In the crate is too much if I work full time. I want structure, but okay, well, you can't leave the dog in a crate for eight hours and go to work. You can't do that. That's not cool at all. So if you don't have the ability to let the dog out every four hours or so, let somebody come in and do it, then you shouldn't do it, right? All right, here's the last question. Shannon, because you did a super chat, I can't, I can't bump out. Um, a one-year-old Bernese Mountain will come on sit and down command, then sit or down. Will come on sit or down command, I don't understand. So what you're saying is breaking his down, right? He's breaking his sit or he's breaking his down. And so you need to fix that. And the way to do that 
is to uh, watch the video I did called The Three Mistakes Tr Dog Trainers Make. And I think it's part two or three. I'm not sure which one. Um, it covers that dog trainers in general teach a sit, they walk away, and then they teach the dog to come. So the way to fix that is to tell your dog sit, walk away from them, and come right back to them, right? And only release them with a tactile release. Critical, critical, critical piece. Tactile release will fix that 100% of the time. So that's an, an hour super chat. Next week, I'm gonna we're going to do it again at this time later in the day. I think a lot of you guys want that. Um, you guys are staying up late in Ireland and the Middle East and stuff, and I really, really, really appreciate that. So thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you so much for your support, for your friendship, for what you do for your dogs, for the love you give to Janet and I. We, we appreciate you guys. We work really hard to make this channel, the best channel there is for dog training. This should be your first and last place that you need to um, check in. Okay, okay, living KV. I'm, I'm gonna give, if you do a super chat, I can't tune you out. I can't take your money and not give you an answer. It would be unfair. Five month old Belgian male, Malinois is 30 pounds. He seems small to me. Is it normal? Um, I don't know. You, you, what I would do there, living KV, is I would um, ask the breeder how big the parents were and if this dog was the runt of the litter but at five months old 30 pounds you know a malinois and i don't know if it's a female or a male but if it's a female they will run small so i wouldn't worry about it just yet right don't worry about it just yet ask the breeder um and uh you know by the time it's a year old it's obviously gonna be quite a bit bigger but a, a 40 pound 45 pound malinois can be a really really nice dog especially if it's a female oh it's a male you said it's a male it's a little bit small but um I've seen some of the show line dogs. The show line dogs are bred a little bit smaller usually. Like Goofy's a very big um, bred dog. He's part show line, part working line. So I wouldn't worry about it. Ask the breeder it would be very important. So, all right, I'm going to um, I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. It's hard for me to say goodbye to you. I feel like you know you, you're right here in our living room and uh, and and our, in my office here. Um, and I appreciate you guys. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Be sure you check, uh, hit the bell, subscribe here so that you know when I'm going to be back. And thank you.